Hey guys, I'm Zoe and I play The Sims and today we are building an old English family mansion. Though, to be real, it's a castle. <laughs> I mean, if you saw the thumbnail, you're about to see whenever the shell is done. But it's, yeah. It's called Old English Family Home on the gallery because I didn't have enough space to fit the word mansion because uh, I ran out of characters. But it's a castle. Uh, oops. <laughs> it's got little turrets and everything. It's got this little front turret. I, I don't know. Cause, cause, so, basically, here's the story. So, uh, I hit a follow a milestone on Tumblr and I was like, yo, send in build requests. If you have a build request, by the way, leave it down below and I'll do that. Including if you want certain packs involved, I could do that as well. But basically, so this is for Footy Goal 04 and her, uh, did I say that? Did you, did you understand me when I said that? Footy Girl 04. I need to cough, but I can't cough for the next 23 minutes. So we're just going to sit here and do this. Um. Sorry, it was made for Footy Girl of Four, it's linked down below. And she wanted a English, in the old English style house for seven sims with bedroom for each child, apart from toddlers. You'll, you'll see the peeps, there, there are peeps involved. Um, and basically, <laughs> I was on Pinterest, so I was, so I was looking at pictures on Pinterest because I didn't know what an old English style was. I'm Australian, I, d I don't live in England. Um, and there were pictures of those flat houses that you see in Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion m movies when they're in town. Like, not their mansions, but when they're in town. And they have those flat-fronted, very square, um, shops. Like that. I'm sorry, I keep saying like, and I'm really trying to stop it. So just smack me. Comment in the com- Comment in the comments. Yes. That's- is that how you say that? I don't- I don't even know. I recorded this before, but my microphone was too crackly. I need a new microphone, but I bought The Sims Parenthood instead. So, <laughs> priorities. Um, yeah. <coughs> okay, we cut that out, hopefully. We'll see. I mean, and basically, we have a house here that's being built. I mean, a castle. And <laughs> it's for seven Sims. So, yeah. So, there are four children, five children, two toddlers, who you have a two share of rooms. So, they're basically one person. It's fine. There's an Artie Sim. There's this really cluttered, really nice room on the second floor. I mean, all the kids are on the second floor. That's, it's kind of a theme that all the kids end up on the second floor because I sort of just put in the kitchen and the dining and the living on the ground floor. And then there's only space enough for one bedroom. And I'm like, why would you put one child on the bottom floor and, you, and like not the parents? You just, you just put the parents. So the parents are always at the bottom floor and then the kids are like, I don't know. That's just how it works out. Also, there's a top room in this. I don't know if you saw when I was building it, but that top bit of the tower doesn't have any stairs going up to it. There's, there's no reason to access that. But I guess if you, I, what I was thinking, if, if you were a vampire, you could go there as a bat, or you could, if you got max wellness skill, you could teleport up there and have a den or a lair or, I don't know. But basically, it's, it's whatever you want it to be. It's just an extra room in the tippy top of a tower if you, you know, wanted to imprison someone for any reason. Not that I'm saying you want to imprison anyone, but just in case, there's a room for that. Uh, I'm not sure if that makes you or me more sus, but we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been nice, and my game, I have no idea what's going on now because the screen is lagged. Um, so I hope the build looks good, because who knows what it's doing at the moment. <laughs> how have you been? I've been stressed. I had a 2,000 word essay due at 5pm. It's currently 6.30. Is the essay finished? No. I'm doing well. It's on it's on childhood in Great Expectations and Victorian England inventing literary childhoods. Basically, I have no idea what I'm talking about. So uh, that's why it's not done, because I, do, I don't know what I'm doing. If you know anything about Great Expectations, tell me in the comments down below, because I, I need your help, please. Um, on a, uh, you know, on a note of people needing help, I was trying to create a segue there and it just, I don't have any segues, I'm sorry. In the note of people needing help, I was volunteering the other day. Um, no, not that I do that regularly, but, um, so I'm at uni and there's a uni notice board online where you get all your information and things and one of them was uh, saying, oh, do you want to, we're looking for volunteers for a book fair and I was like, books? Books and volunteering? I can volunteer to be around books? Yes. Can you tell? I'm lame. Um, but yeah, so I volunteered to help out with these books. And so on Friday, today is, I do, honestly don't, it's Tuesday. I'm, my days of the week are not good at the moment. It's, I'm, yeah, it's bad. So uh, Friday, which was a while ago, 
I was unpacking uh, books off the truck. So there were poor people at a warehouse somewhere putting books onto a truck. I was taking them off a truck with a bunch of other people and then uh, putting them in other boxes on tables, basically, to display them. And then there were so many extras, they were saying, just put the books that don't fit on the tables under the table. We were like, the table, there are so many tables, there's so much table space. We're definitely going to fit things on top of the tables and no, I, th there were just more trucks. <laughs> the truck had a black hole in the back of it, they just kept pulling out boxes. I know that's not how black holes work. D d strong workers pulled things out, I don't know. Basically, <laughs> never ending void of boxes of books. Which is always a good thing, if you like books, to have never ending books. And even better, was that once we had almost finished putting books up on tables, they were saying to us, oh, because you're volunteering, you know, feel free to take, you know, some free books. And I was like, free books? And they were saying, yeah, yeah, just take as many as you want. Because, you know, dude, we don't want them. We've got to, like, look how many we have. <laughs> they're under the tables, they're on top of the tables, they're in every single corner, you know. Feel free to take some, because no one will notice. And I was like, take as many as you want. And I was saying, but are you sure you mean as many as I want? Because I happened to have a mostly empty backpack on that day because I, I didn't really bring anything to volunteering because I, I didn't need anything. <laughs> They're like, yeah, yeah, definitely take as many as you want. And I'm not proud, but I filled that backpack up until I physically could not put any more books in it. And that was the only reason I stopped taking books. There were five other books I wanted to take. And I was like, well, they don't fit in my backpack, so too bad. <laughs> that was the only reason I stopped taking books. So, uh, fun fact about me takes all the books um <laughs> and then what's even worse so I was there again on Sunday so yeah we put the books out on sa uh, Friday night and then at 10 a.m on Saturday it opened and I got there at 12 on Sunday for the 12 to 4 shift of selling the books on um Sunday so I was at the table taking books for people you know looking at things and it's getting towards the end of the day, it closed at five and I was finishing at four and they were saying, oh, you know, because you're volunteering, do you want to go grab some more books? I said, no, no, that's what you said to me on Friday and I already took too many books. They were saying, no, no, but you know, it's the very end of the book sale. What we don't s sell, they were giving some to Diabetes Australia. And this is a, I'm sorry, I, the whole point of this was that I was supposed to get my microphone to not crackle and it's probably still crackling. So we'll see how this goes. I just move my head a lot. It's a really bad it's a really bad habit when uh, you don't own microphones. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll work on that, but I have negative three dollars. Uh, I mean, now I have negative thirty-three dollars because I bought Parenthood. So uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Sunday. Yes, they was because it was the end of the book sale, and they were giving some to a diabetes. Ah, words. They were giving some of the books. To Diabetes Australia. Can you understand my enunciation now? <laughs> probably not, that's probably worse. Um, yeah, so the 50 cent and one dollar books went to Diabetes Australia. And then um, they were giving the children's books and like education books to uh, primary schools because they needed more books. But all the other books were just going back into storage for next year because it was going to become an annual event because it was actually so successful. They got 10,000 donations of books and CDs and DVDs and vinyls and things since February and it's now June. Sorry, I just have to mentally work out what the time is. How the progression of time. I'm, time is not my strong suit at the moment. I'm on study leave and it's that thing where you're in the holidays and because there's no school and no um, timetabling, you just, I don't know what days are anymore. <laughs> so that's why I didn't know it was a Tuesday. I don't know what days are. But uh, yeah, stuff happens. They offered me more books. Yeah, because all the other books were going to storage. I should stop giving myself sidetracks. This is a sidetrack because it just means that I have no idea what I'm talking about and then you have no idea what I'm talking about and then none of us have any idea what I'm talking about, which clearly helpful. Um, so they offered me more free books and I took more free books, which yeah, is bad. I mean, I did, I finished at four and I stayed until six. Yeah, so it finished at five and then we had to pack up afterwards. It was really cute because they had like a little champagne toasty thing, you know, to celebrate that they actually succeeded in selling all of the, those books. And it was raising um, money for mental health. Uh, so it was a charity, charity book fair, uh, raising money for mental health. And they actually like did quite well for themselves. So they had, yeah, the little toasty thing. It was quite cute. But I have two new books now. I had two new books before and now I just have more two new books, which 
some people would argue is not possible, but I'm one of those people, but also I physically don't have any space. Uh, my bookshelf is full, and so my mum bought me a like trolley thing. It was, it's actually a giant trolley thing, and now that's full. And uh, she doesn't let me put books on the floor because she, my mum is a minimalist, and I am a hoarder, and we get along well, clearly. So I just stack things on the floor. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's fine. She's like, no, no, everything must be clean. Your desk is so messy. I'm like, my desk has piles of things. You know, everything's in its right pile. She's like, but there's so many piles. Literally half my desk is taken up with piles of things, which are supposed to be there. Like, that's the only, she just says, put them away. I'm like, but the, that's where they go. <laughs> that's where I've been putting them, you know. Um, but yeah, now I have too many books. But there were, so there were these beautiful hard hardcover, red, gorgeous, they've got little designs on them, volume one and two of um, Tolstoy's Anna Karenina, which I can never say correctly, Karenina. <laughs> it's, a it's a really bad name to try and say, especially when I can barely talk as is, but they were going for one dollar each, and they were flawless, and I just, oh, they were so underselling themselves, they just, <laughs> they were saying that once, they were, they were saying, we have no idea how much this stuff is worth, so we're just giving them away. I was like, you should have consulted me sooner, because I could have told you. Because, <laughs> you, you know, they're gorgeous, and I've just, you know, got them for a dollar. And I've got an audiobook of Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantle. I'm just staring at my piles of books, trying to frantically remember what they are. Oh, I got a little, like, hard copy, car, hardcover copy of As You Like It, which is my favourite Shakespeare play. It's the best. It's hilarious. It's about, that's the one about cross-dressing. Basically, uh... A, a girl and her friend get banished and so they decide it's it'll be safer for them instead of being two girls walking through the forest that they're a uh, brother and sister walking through the forest because then they're less likely to get sexually assaulted <laughs> it's a Shakespeare play and they're like yeah this is I don't know it's we ha I have some questions but yeah so um she ends up cross-dressing and she meets her love from the city that she got exiled from but as a boy and he doesn't recognize her and so she's counselling him in how to date her, Rosalind, but the guy thinks he's talking to Ganymede. And then <laughs> there are some scenes, though, between Ganymede, her cross-dressing, and the guy she likes, Orlando, in which Orlando is attracted to her as Ganymede. And he's really concerned by this because he's like, I don't like men because it's Shakespeare's time. And, you know, no one was gay, obviously. Pfft, gayness wasn't a thing. But, uh, <laughs> but he is attracted, and there are scenes where they almost kiss, and then Orlando was like, wait. <laughs> when did that happen? Um, it's, it's a great play. And just Rosalind is... She's often cited as one of Shakespeare's best female characters because she gets to cross-dress. She gets to sort of cross all of those boundaries of being sort of passive and things, because she has to act like a guy. And so she gets to be bossy and she gets to tell him around and she gets to, it's hilarious. It's quite like, um, my other favourite is A Midsummer Night's Dream because I love Hermia and Helena. And there's a, I'll, <laughs> I'm just assuming everyone's read all the Shakespeare. I created a five to six, depending on whether you have the vampire pack. Six, unless you don't have vampires and then it's five. Generation Shakespeare Legacy Challenge. Which I shouldn't have done because I should have been writing my essay. Which... Did I say this already? I don't know. I recorded this voiceover once before, but it was due at 5 at 6.30. No, I did say that. But I should have been writing that essay. Instead, I wrote a Sixth Generation Legacy Challenge. It doesn't include As You Like It, but it includes some other Shakespeare, because I'm just... I'm a nerd. I'm doing English, but not writing my English essays. That was on, yeah, Great Expectations, which is less fun, but As You Like It. Um, but yeah, that also assumes that you've actually read Shakespeare, and it's... I, I don't know, I find myself being slightly sassy. Like, the Macbeth generation has after he kills... So he kills Vlad, because I decided that Vlad was king. So he wants to be a master va vampire. So he becomes a master vampire, kills Vlad, and then has to quit his job, mope around the house all day, and make one knife block, like, on the woodworking table, every day for the rest of his life. <laughs> Which I found hilarious to add to that list of things you had to do with that generation, that he just had to make knife blocks forever. Because Macbeth has that whole thing with seeing the dagger in the sky and now he just has to make knife blocks forever because I arbitrarily decided he did. Sorry, Macbeth. Oh, gosh. 
I actually want to play with that, but I have like 47 different things going on at once and I don't have time for that nonsense. If you want to see some of the things that are going on, check my Broke with Baby Challenge because that's chaos. <laughs> you thought this was chaos? That is also chaos. Oh my gosh, I want to read my As You Like It. I've just taken it out and now I'm flicking through it. I'm like, no, you're, doing, you're in the middle of a voiceover, damn it. <laughs> Stop reading things. But yeah, you can see that I'm trash. Um, what else was I supposed to talk about today? <laughs> oh gosh, volunteering, I talked about poofs. Oh yes, oh my gosh, sorry, I have a little list here of things to talk about because otherwise I never get through 23 minutes, but poofs. So in my last build, which it was more decent than this one because this one's a castle and it was supposed to be a family home. I'm, we'll just pretend that never happened. It's a, it's a nice castle, okay? But if you wanted a family home and you got a castle, I, I'm sorry, funny girl, that I failed you. But uh, check out her Tumblr in the link down below uh, and commiserate with the fact that I've, I've, I failed her. Send her nice asks saying I'm sorry that Zoe failed you. <laughs> um, but yeah, in my last build, I was uh, putting down those little like beanbaggy things from a uh, movie stuff pack. Uh, and they've got them in city living as well. Those They look like footrests, but they're chairs, you know, of their own right. But I was calling them poofs, which is what I know them about, which is P-O-U-F. Which is actually what they're called, but they're also called, like in other countries, Ottomans, which is... <laughs> it's just, it's too fancy a word, because they're little like beanbaggy things, and it's just an Ottoman. It sounds very, it's very fancy. And just, yeah, I mean, the other version is poof. So you have like Ottoman or poof, and I'm like... <laughs> so English is weird. Uh, what else is new? This bathroom situation is terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. Aside from giving you a castle instead of a, a house, you have this bathroom situation on the second floor. So there are seven bathrooms in this house, six of which have showers. So there's three on the downstairs. One of them is an ensuite to the parents' bedroom. Two of them are just downstairs bathrooms. And there are these four upstairs. And I, d I just had this space. And technically, if I was a normal person, I would have made one big bathroom. Or maybe two big bathrooms, because that's what normal people do. They have space, you know, to sort of luxuriate in. And that, I think, turned out in the athletic kids' bedrooms. The art kid bedroom is full of art stuff, because The Sims 4 just has so much art clutter. But the athletic kids have space and room to sort of fit, because there's not that much athletic stuff, so they don't really have that much in their room. But, yeah, if you're looking at these bathrooms, they just sort of mush together. You can get into all of them. Like, they're all functional. They just look... <laughs> I mean, you can see, they look really weird. Uh, I'm sorry. But hey, it's functional because it's a seven sim house. I'm, yeah, it's a seven sim house and there are seven bathrooms, which is necessary, I found. In my experience with legacy challenges is that I never have enough bathrooms. My current legacy challenge, which check down below is on my Tumblr, has three bathrooms. There's two upstairs and one downstairs, but the downstairs one's an ensuite. And so there's no actual bathroom downstairs. And that was a mistake. Uh, I should have put a bathroom downstairs, but it just didn't, it didn't fit. So, um, yeah, this, <laughs> to compensate, this house has far too many bathrooms. Way, way too many. Uh, but yeah, I do like these people's bath- Ah, do like these people's bedrooms. Not bathrooms, bedrooms. Because yeah, they're quite open and spacious and I, I mean, I didn't fill them as much as I normally fill rooms because I'm a naturally cladded person. You might have heard, I'm, I hoard books. Uh, <laughs> And so my houses are also naturally cluttered that I just, if walls don't have things on them, they look weird to me. It looks like they're missing stuff. So I just add stuff to walls. But I mean, it's probably a bad thing, but that's just how I build. If you want me to, me to build you something, comment down below. Include stuff packs if you want them. Or I can build base game things. Or I can build starter homes. I can go crazy. Uh, I have a couple of other things built that I'm, I'm really far behind on. I'm, I'll work on them. And then I'll work on yours if you comment them down below. Uh, other things, parenthood, which is great actually. Um, check out my Broke with Baby Challenge if you want to see parenthood stuff because I realized halfway through recording that episode that I'd have a toddler and I, I didn't think I was going to have children in order to play parenthood but because it's a Broke with Baby Challenge you have a baby, obviously. Um, and so I can play parenthood which I totally wasn't expecting but hey, it worked out so it's all good. Because um, my Not So Berry Challenge, every, like Gen 2 has turned into teens and so they're about to turn into your uh, they're about to turn into young adults. My mouth is just not cooperating with me 
<laughs> you might have noticed. Um, but yeah, they're about to turn to young adults, and so I, I'm not really going to be able to use a parenthood pack with them because they're going to age up too soon. But yeah, I've got a toddler, so yeah, check that out if you want to see toddlers. It's surprisingly cute because <laughs> the father is Jacques Villarreal, and I mean Luna is cute, but Max is terrible if you've seen him aged up. And Hugo, I mean Hugo's cute. Oh, I, I always feel bad for Hugo because everyone makes fun of him. Oh, no, he's actually so sweet, and he's in the little foodie group, and I just... Anyway, I'm too attached to Sims. He's not even my Sims. He's an EA Sim, but I just I like Hugo. He's really underrated. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Parenthood is good, and I'm actually really enjoying all of the interactions between siblings. Though that's that is the one thing I do get in my Not So Very Challenge is that the siblings can interact with each other, <laughs> and so you have like tease about face, <laughs> which actual like I my siblings do that to me. They're like, well, your face is bad. <laughs> You know, when you say something insulting and they're just like, well, your face is ugly. And you're like, mm-hmm. But it's an, it's an interaction you can do with The Sims now. And that just, it makes me happy. <gasps> what really makes me happy? I'm still not over this. I mentioned it in the, in the uh, Broken Baby Challenge. When you get to level six of the parenting skill, you can know what your baby wants. I've been waiting for that since I like swapped over from The Sims 3. Because in The Sims 3, you can just click on the baby and it gives you all of its you know, needs. And so it's really easy. Also, I'm just going to mention this room. I didn't know what to do with that space because I didn't want to close it off to the bedroom because otherwise you couldn't get into the bedroom from the front door. But it's got a, it's sort of weirdly formal because the rest of the inside of the house isn't formal, but the outside of the house is formal. So it's just, there's a piano room. If you have better ideas, please use them. But, uh, what was I talking about? I don't know. I was on a train of thought. This, this build was kind of a train wreck, as was the voiceover. I probably repeated myself. <laughs> Sorry. Also, uh, my schedule should be better now, and you won't have to wait five days for a video. So, subscribe for more chaos, because uh, d that I would, more chaos will definitely be provided. Like, no, definitely chaos will happen. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> that's the end of the build. Like if you liked, subscribe for more chaos, comment down below uh, how you would fix this house and what you would do with that weird piano room because I, genu I genuinely have no clue because there's a study upstairs, I don't know, I just didn't know what to do with it. But yeah, <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. Bye <laughs> bye. <laughs>